Let me ask you a question. Did you come here to listen to money or make it? This is L.A. Williams, the blind master. And Sean V. Bradley and I came here for one reason and one reason only. That's to fill your pockets with money. Now how are we going to do it? By giving you the secrets, techniques, and strategies for you to stop losing and start winning at this game called Automotive Professional Sales. Hey everybody, this is Sean B. Bradley, president of Dealer Synergy and the creator of the Millionaire Car Salesman Facebook group, as well as creator of the Millionaire Car Salesman podcast. And I've got my man, uh, the young Jedi, Mr. Malik Bonner. So Malik, I'm going to give you the honor of introducing our special guest. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to introduce my brother. His name is Kelby Peace Bullock. After, man, I feel like four years of fighting tooth and nail to get him into the automotive industry, I dragged him in. I pulled him down the aisle. So that's who you're speaking with today. So, Kelby, what's up, brother, man? So, again, um, welcome to the automotive industry. How long have you been in the automotive industry for? literally uh, a month and probably like a week and a half. All right. So what did you do before you got into the automotive industry? Um, I, my background is customer service. So, I mean, from working at Comcast to during the COVID uh, times during the pandemic, I was a site lead, which is basically a COVID testing specialist. So you would come into a testing site, the manager would be me. I would be the person that you would either talk to if you had any issues, problems, or anything like that. But most of my professional career has been customer service. But before that, let me just kind of tell everybody this, running joke with me and my little brother, Kelby's probably had every job on the face of the earth. <laughs> so it's like a running joke in our family. And I'm sure we all have you know people that, that we know who are like this. You know, they work at the gas station, work at Blockbuster. He's been busy working at a bowl. Not like he's probably done almost every job you can think of. So everything is his background. Literally. So, so question for you. Um, if you don't want me asking, how old are you? I will be 30 on Friday. Okay. So when you were a little boy, did you turn on and tell your family and friends, when I grow up, I'm, I'm going to work in a car dealership? Funny. Um, I never did, but... I was always fascinated by cars. My grandfather, or should I say our grandfather, he had a auto body shop place over in Philadelphia. So I was okay. always around cars. I remember being in his 1972 Cadillac, pearl white with red leather interior. And he babied it to my grandmother, ruined it. But that's neither here nor there. But um, the, reason I'm, the reason why I'm asking is that, brother, most people in our industry don't plan on winding up in our industry. They really don't. The vast, vast majority of people um, don't think, hey, when I grow up, I'm going to be a car salesman. It's not the first thing on their radar. But right. what I find and what I found throughout all my almost 20 years owning the company and 23 years in the industry is that the majority of people that are successful in it, they they had no idea this was going to be it. Like, you know, they, they were going to get so much out of automotive. But once they get here, most people that are successful in our industry, they have no idea, you know, that this was going to be that lucrative. And a lot of people, when they figure it out, they're like, my God, why didn't I get into the industry sooner? So if I'm understanding, the reason why you got into automotive is because Malik has been telling you automotive, automotive, or is it something that you 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 thought you have interest in yourself? Uh. <laughs> Like my older brother said, I mean, he's been pulling my leg, pulling my arm, trying to tell me, hey, look, this is what you, hey, you need to do this. Hey, you need to get into this industry. And for a while, I was just like, no, 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 I'm not going to do it. I, I, I'm not interested. But after a while, I mean, it got to the point where I was like, you know what, let me, let me just try it out. Let me, let me see what it's all about. All right. So, so now that we got that going I want to talk to you, like, uh, just be honest, bro. Like, what are some of your fears or like that, that you had getting to the automotive industry? Like, I mean, let's talk about like, were you skeptical at all? And it's okay if you were, you know what I'm saying? Like, and if you were, let's talk about them. Like, what were you nervous about before you pulled the trigger? Let's start there. So I was, I was highly skeptical. 
Um, I mean, we're, we're talking about the number one thing that I always told myself, I never wanted to work on commission because that's not promised. It's different than something where I can be like, okay, I'm getting paid at this hour, this dollar amount. I should be expecting a check this time. But when it came to commission, I was just like, I don't know when I'm going to get it, how I'm going to get it, if I'm going to sell, even though I know how to sell. But there was no promise. There's no promise to say, okay, if you if you sell one, at least one thing, then this little amount would be yours. And I didn't want to chance that. So I always neglected to, to even take this chance. The other thing I was skeptical about was as far as competition. It's, it's a competition. So I have to sell more than the next guy. And I felt like me trying to compete with somebody just to pay their bills and stuff like that. I felt like that shouldn't be needed in a job. Why do I have to compete? Or, or why should it be something to where I have to do something in order to get this amount of money? And those are the two things that, that just stood out to me. That's the reason why I was, I kept pushing away from it. Okay, well, listen, um, the first one is one of the biggest ones right there, why people don't get into automotive and more importantly, why they don't stay in automotive because the per performance-based or commission-based thing, it, it could be psychologically stressful to people. And it, it's, it could breed massive amount of anxiety. Now, I'll be honest with you, all, all my years, the competitiveness I don't normally get that one, but that's dope that you said that because it, it's obviously was something of a concern to you. But both of those things that you said have to do with one thing, paradigm. It has to do with where your paradigm is, where your mindset is. Um, and, and this is deep, brother. I want you to understand. I'm talking to you like you're my family because Malik is like my family. You know what I mean? So my two daughters and my nephew are, are in the automotive industry. And so I'm going to talk to you like you're one of them. And I'm going to say this. Your mind is such a powerful thing. If you are going to look at this like, man, um, you know, I'm not guaranteed a, 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 an opportunity you know, like an income, you know, that's kind of scary or that's bad or man, I might not make my rent or whatever. You're absolutely right, bro. Nobody's going to spend that shit. That's right. That's your reality. But if you flip the mindset and you're like, yo, so wait a minute here. These suckers over here work in their regular job, no matter how nice they are, no matter how hard they work, they still make the same shit. Wait a minute. You're telling me no matter if they you know, come in early, maybe they'll get a little extra hourly, but there's nothing really dramatically going to be different because right. they're locked into that. But for me, I, I could make as much money as I can earn. If I turn around, like, and my brother, I literally go check the tape. Like this, this morning I interviewed Cody Carter and, and a guy named Corey King, or was it yesterday? In the last 24 hours, I did this, right? I remember. Oh, it was it. yesterday. It was mm -hmm. yesterday. It was yesterday. Cause I, I talked about it in the morning show. Do you know what this man just said to me? He literally sold 105 cars last month, okay? 105 cars last month he sold. And he made probably about $100,000 last month, dog. Do you understand me? This is what a commission-based person made was $100,000 last month selling cars. Oh, and by the way, he went on live screen right here. Like I'm interviewing you on Zoom. He went on here, showed us the screen. He's in a Facebook group called the 2024 um, something Highlander. It was Grand. Grand Highlander, yeah. The 2024 Grand Highlander, right? He's in the 2024 Grand Highlander group. He posted not even a video, three pictures within one hour. Not only did he sell that Grand Hyler at full list, made five, $6,000 deal. On top of that, he got three or four other people that, that he didn't have a car for. He took a couple deposits. And he's got, a, got, a, got a, a couple hot things popping. He's making so much money, he said. He's buying cars for wreck all over the country. He's buying three TRXs and he's selling for ten to eighteen thousand dollars profit a piece. So I mean, like, and yeah, and here's the crazy point. You ready for this? His schedule, he works nine to three, five days a week.
nine to three, five days a week, and he sold 105 cars. So my man, it's all about the way you look at shit. You heard of uh, the half is either the glass is half full or the glass is half empty. And again, right. I'm not saying this is half full, half empty, but it's you're absolutely right. It's like, oh my God, oh, my chest is beating. That commission got me shook, man. I might not make any money. You're right. You might be broke. You might not make any money, but guess what? Okay, that's what ramen noodles and tuna fish are for. If you have a week like that, but guess what? The following week, you're having lobster and filet mignon. You know what I mean? Like, again, yeah. until you get into the rhythm of, of how, to, how to make money, how to build your business, and how to allocate your business, and how not to get crushed on taxes, and how to defer your checks. I mean, this is all part of the experience, but my point being, take it back to mindset. If you have that fear mindset or that that minimal mindset or that loss potential or the glasses half empty type stuff, you're going to think that commissions is, you know, a bad thing. You know what I mean? Like it's not there. And you're not the only one, brother. I got family members that get anxiety from like the sales stuff and not being able to guarantee a certain thing. So I'm not going to say that you're weird or you're stupid or that you're wrong. I'm not saying any of that. You have the right to feel that what you do. But all I challenge you to do is this, is look at it from a different perspective. Look at it at a different paradigm. And, and remember, being commission-based, it means being performance-based. You're being paid on your performance. And let me be clear, though. It's not your effort, bro. I mean, like, because if that was the case, we all be stupid rich, you know what I mean? Or hopefully, theoretically, we'd be stupid rich. It's right. about the end result. And so this, to me, is so powerful because it's not, you know, it's not like, oh, I should get compensated. And as a business owner, bro, let me be honest with you. Like, I don't believe in participant trophies. Like, my kids are straight little soldiers. They go to jujitsu, they go to wrestling, and, and if they get second place, or God forbid they get third place, they don't want that bullshit. There's not one second place, third place, or fourth place, or a damn sure a participant trophy in my entire house. I won't allow it, and my kids won't even allow it, because you know what? They're, they're okay with not always winning. But, the, you know, but they're also OK, you know what I mean, uh, with with the fact that, you know, if they don't win, you know, as long as they try the best that they could, they're OK. So I'm not like a psychopath. But my point being is mm -hmm. that, you know, they don't need a participant trophy to feel good about themselves. That's what's wrong with America, brother, in my opinion. There's too many fucking participant trophies that are out there and people are so entitled. Follow me on this. As a multimillionaire that I am and a business owner, I much rather pay more money for my employees that deliver shit, okay? That that I'd rather give them a piece of something that they're that they're able to to bring in versus just pay them for their effort. Because at the end of the day, my clients, car dealers, they're not going to stay with us just because we're nice, just because we care, just because we work hard. Malik, right or wrong, bro? We've had dealers cancel us, you know what I mean? Like in the past, and it has nothing to do with our effort, our skill or whatever. It doesn't matter. Follow me on this. If a dealer doesn't move the needle, whether it's our fault or not, why are they going to stay on there? This is not the Red Cross or, or, or charity or church. You feel me? So the only way that we have our clients is if we help them move the needle, and sometimes, most of the times it works, but if, if they have a problem with management or a problem with one of their HR, they don't have enough people, we're not magicians. So again, do you see what I'm saying? As a business owner, I don't want to just pay people that are like luggage. Even if it's Louis Vuitton pretty looking luggage, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's crocodile skin luggage. It, it's still luggage, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you want to earn your keep. And, and, and again, I'm telling you, most business people will pay more for positive results. Let me give you a specific example. Do I want to pay you a flat couple thousand dollars base salary? Like that's $500 a week. Do I want to pay you that? And you could do shit. You could fall asleep in your demo. You could be talking about football or what you want for lunch or complaining about the election or all this other stuff. Do I want to give you a salary of that? Or do I want to pay you more on the percentage if you actually close a deal? And that's what the automotive industry is, in my opinion. It is one of the most incredible aspects that you could make as much money as you can earn. But the key word is earning. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. 
So performance based, Malik, I'm gonna let you get some. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, man. Let me just kind of rehash on what Sean kind of went through. And the word that we really, really hammer home was fear. So for my listeners, no more fear, no more false expectations appearing real. No more fear. Fear to me is like a bridge that too many people refuse to cross. And we've all been taught that everything we want is on the other side of hard. I say everything you want is on the other side of fear. Think how many times you've been afraid to do something. And I'm not talking about jumping off of buildings and things like that, but like life goals, things that you want to achieve. There's always a sense of fear there, apprehension. And think back to the times where you fought through it and you made it to the other side. It always worked out in your favor. This is how life works, ladies and gentlemen. Do not allow fear to keep you from accomplishing your goals. And while we don't believe in participation trophies at all, I'm a firm believer that if I leave it all in the field, if I leave it all on the floor, if I know that I did everything that I could, I'm going to live with those results. And I'm going to move on to the next opportunity. That's how we need to attack life. That's how you attack business. That's how you attack everything. So I love what you're saying, Sean. Thank you, Malik. I, I appreciate that. Now, the next thing is the competitiveness. That's where I'm going to disagree. You know, it doesn't have to be if you don't want it to be. If your managers are pitting you against other people and stuff like that, that's the manager. But you can't be in competition with anybody else unless you want to be in competition with somebody else. Now, for me, though, when I was young and I was 22 years old and I was selling cars, man, I thought it was about me versus everybody else. And my guy was Carter Nice. You know, we were both 30 car guys, you know what I mean? We were in competition, like Bloods and Crips, man. We used to just like skate each other. Like, you know, I used to take his demo keys. He used to take my shit. Like it was just, it was war, you know? It was like professional war, you know what I'm saying? But that's because I was just young and stupid. You know, I would say the competition that you should have is with yourself. Because honestly, that's your best opponent. That's going to be your most difficult opponent is you beating yourself, beating your like, if you really uh, practice Socrates, Socrates is famous for a lot of things. But one of my favorite things that he's famous for is know thyself. And that's the thing you say all the time, know thyself. If you could really know yourself, know your strengths, know your weaknesses, Know your opportunities based on your situation, your dealership, your demographic, your, your goals, mission, vision, values, whatever, and know your, your weaknesses or your challenges. Then on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you need to challenge yourself. Okay, if you know weakness, 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 challenge yourself to push through those weaknesses, overcome those weaknesses, you know, modify those handicaps, those weaknesses, uh, or you know what your strengths are, challenge yourself to, to do more in those things or leverage those strengths. Do you see what I'm saying? Like I would be trying to outdo me, make it more important. Why would I give a shit about what somebody else is doing? Like, think about that. Like, how am I going to compete against Cody Carter? If I'm only selling 20, 30 cars, how does that even make sense? That's like somebody like my five foot short ass trying to compete against Michael Jordan. What I look like trying to compete against Michael Jordan, even if he's old now, don't matter. He's still whipping my ass, dunking on me. Right. So it doesn't make no sense, but I'm going to compete against Sean Bradley. That's who I want to compete against. I want to know exactly where I'm at in everything on my, on my outbound calls, emails, text messages, social media DMs, my inbound ups, the eight ways to sell, walk us, be back, internet, phone, prior customers, you know, referrals, lost art of prospect and service conversions, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to get all my stats, blah, and then I want to constantly challenge myself and compete against myself. You know what? That's what I would say is, you know, if, if you don't think you, you should be competing against somebody else, then don't compete against somebody else. This ain't like blood sport, man. It's not like, it's like a, like, like um, a, a fucking like Michael Vick dog fight and shit like that at the dealership. This ain't prison rules. So the dealerships don't have like, you know, you versus the other person, literally, they're just trying to gas you up and motivate you to turn around and try to do better than the other person. You could choose not to engage. So if the dealer turns around and the manager says, yo, 
You know what I mean? Like Bob's got, you know, that, and you know what I would say? Congratulations to Bob. I'm going to try to do the best that I could do, but good. I want Bob to win. There's enough money for everybody. There's enough ups for everybody. And just say that, you know what? I have the mindset of abundance. Everybody could win. You know what I mean, don't get me wrong. Bob, I'm trying to, you know, if, if I am able to crush, you know, Bob's numbers, great, but that's because I want to do the best for me, not because I'm trying to do better than Bob. I don't give a shit about what Bob is doing. I give a shit about what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Malik, you want to tag on that? Yeah. One of my favorite songs by Most Death, I Against I. So it's that's always the competition. You're only competing against yourself. However, I'll kind of let some of my personal, a personal touch on this. I know Know Thyself is big. I like to compete. That's kind of how I like my sound of how I fire myself up. If I don't have competition, if there's nothing, I'm not competing against anybody. There's, there's, there's not that, I don't have that extra oomph. So for those of us who like to compete and you live on competition, we're not discouraging that at all. What Sean is saying though, is that it's not about comparison. Comparison is the thief of joy. You should be competing and comparing with yourself, but there's nothing wrong with getting out there and saying, I want to be the best. You should want to be the best. And if you don't feel like you can be the best, you probably have no business on your showroom floor, picking up the phone, doing whatever it is that you do. If you don't think you can be the best, go. No, Malik, well said. So I want to be clear. I'm not against competition. I just told you my entire showroom career where I was the best out of the, the dealership. I was number one salesman of the month, salesman of the year. It's because I was competing, trying to, you know, be better than everybody else. What I'm saying now as a soon to be next week, I'm going to be 47 years old next week as a soon to be 47 year old man. You know, I, I, I am a little bit wiser, a little bit more experienced saying that I don't have to do that, but there's nothing wrong with that. So my point to you, Kelby, is that if competition or competing against your fellow, you know, team member is not something that's in your heart, it doesn't have to be, you know what I mean? Compete against yourself. But to Malik's point, you know, if you are one of those competitive people and you want to be the best in the dealership and you want to go head to head, that's what that's what sports is about. It's like, look, man, I respect your your game, but I'm the best baller here. And you know what? And, and let's go on the court and prove it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But again, it has to do with what paradigm it's again, it's how you perceive the situation. So. All right. That's good. Now. Those are really good things, man. And it's so I'm so glad, honestly, that you mentioned the commission based stuff, because not only is that one of the biggest reasons why people don't get into this business, that's one of the biggest reasons why they jump out or they abort or they defect or, you know, there's so much attrition is because the, the commissions kind of get to people. After these messages, we'll be right back. Dealer Synergy is an award-winning training, consulting, CRM, recruiting, and accountability firm. We are a 13-time Dealer Choice Award winner. We have proudly served automotive dealers for 20 years and have trained over 150,000 automotive sales professionals. We've worked with over 3,700 rooftops across the country, not including our global clients in Canada, Russia, the Dominican Republic, and more. We are the most sought after subject matter experts and pioneers of the automotive industry. Our executive team has a combined 75 plus years of automotive industry expertise at the highest level. We've literally taken dealerships from having challenges and problems, some even on the brink of bankruptcy, to becoming national success stories. Dealer Synergy has really helped build something from the ground up. You guys have made me fall in love with what I've always loved to do. I, I give credit to Dealer Synergy. I just hired eight people and Dealer Synergy HR really was critical in me being able to do it. You provided the training, you helped us with our CRM, you provided a solution for a lot of things that I was looking for. Our people love LA, what Karen has done to me personally. Franca, her communication back and forth. You've got a really solid group of people. Having somebody like Sean and his company that knows automotive, so the marriage between what knowledge he possesses and the fact that he has this great video production staff, it gives you the best of both worlds. So I would certainly recommend them. Sean comes in the dealership and he advanced us light years ahead of our competition. Just an absolute leading edge training company. Go to BradleyOnDemand.com and give your team access to the best automotive training in the world. All right, so now tell me what it's been like working in the industry for a month and a half or less than two months. Uh, tell us what your experience has been like. Man, um, I, I have to admit, it, 
180. I, I'm completely what my fears of of this whole entire industry is are, are are gone. You know, now being on the other side of it, understanding the mindset or the methods behind everything that we do now, it's almost like, okay, I wake up with a hunger. I wake up with a yearning to be like, okay, I see why there's a competitiveness that's in everybody. You know, uh, one of the uh, guys that I work with, great guy, he's been here for like 18 years. He says, listen, man, you got to pay your rent just as much as I do. Now, I'm not going to take money out of your pocket and you ain't going to take money out of mine. So everybody gets to eat. Everybody gets money. Everybody deserves a shot to to be what they want to be. You want to be a business owner? Great. You want to be uh, you want to go out and, and, and do your own car dealership? Great. You want to be you want to grow in the business. You want to become your own boss? Great. However you want to do it, you can do it. And it starts here. So me being at me being a part of this industry now, I, I, I see why Malik wanted me to be in it. I see why he, he how many cars me. you sell last month? You sold nine cars in your first month. Yes. OK, how much money did you make? Just curious. I think it was about fifty two, fifty three. If I'm if I'm if I'm being honest. Yeah, no, that's what I want you to be. So again, were you surprised that you made that much money your first month in the car business? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I, I've never made 52, 53 in, in, in a month. Never, never. So this has been beyond my expectations. All right. So here's the crazy part. If you listen to your brother, because he's a very good trainer and coach, you're going to be able to make double that. OK, making eight to ten thousand dollars in a month is not going to be difficult. Now, you work for the Preston Automotive Group, right? That is correct. You know that they've been a client of ours, you know, for about like 18 years. You know what I mean? Not straight. Like we've had multiple stores in multiple states from the Preston Automotive Group. So, you know, uh, Bobby Preston is, is a great guy. You know what I mean? His mm -hmm. family is amazing. Um, and we've worked with them, I think, in three different states. So you are you are with a great automotive group. They're good people. But I want to just let you know that car sales, and I'm sure Malika shared this with you, is literally what you put into it is what you get out of it. And I'm so glad that you listened to your brother and trusted him instead of listening to your fear or your anxiety or your skepticism or the stereotypical things. Cause I'm not stupid. People think that car people are either shady or they're this or they're that. And there's a million reasons why you could have, or you shouldn't have joined the automotive industry, but bro, listen, like how the hell can you go into a brand new career that you don't know shit from shit, nobody from nobody and make $5,300 legally, ethically, morally speaking, and know that you're at the bottom of the barrel. It, you only could go one way up from here. Right. Right. Is that, I, is that mind blowing? The, it's, it's crazy because <laughs> I, I, the, I, I'll say this and I, I give all credit. Well, first honor to God, but secondly, my my older brother, man, if there's anybody that I ever wanted to compete with, whether it's professionally, whether it's sports, it's always been my older brother. And I have to admit, bro, you were right. Bro, you were right. I admit I, I need to I need to follow your training. And honestly, the way that me and my brother, the relationship that we have. And the fact that he can speak to me in a way that's different from everybody else, it, it honestly, we had a call not too long ago. And the fact that we sat on an hour and a half call, just going through like the road to the sale, you know, just going through the, what we call practices, the P, the R, the A, the T, I, C, E, S, all that stuff at 1230, almost one o'clock in the morning, just, just to make sure I, I, I fully understand and have the training and the know-how. The very next day, the very next day, I sold two cars off of his training alone. So it pays dividends. It pays dividends. I mean, I, I can't say how much I, I've been like shocked and kind of amazed even myself. So you're basically saying that the the dealer synergy training you're getting from from the young Jedi over here has helped you immediately sell cars. 
I wish I could say otherwise, <laughs> but I can't. It's it's honestly the That's best. Awesome. It's honestly so Malik, best. can you can you talk to not only your brother but just talk to all, everybody listening? What do you think are the most important elements when you first get into the business, like your brother? What what should a new hire be focused on training on right now? Like, you know, what should your brother, so talk to your brother, but talk to the industry for all new hires. What should they learn to master? First thing in the OEM, make sure that you're going to do this. Know your product. Got to get your OEM training done. Sean, you said this. Now hear from the Jedi man. Don't pay somebody to do your training. Do your own training. Know your product. So that's the first thing. And if they don't offer training or you can't find a training, it's on YouTube somewhere. Find the training, find the material. The second, learn how to properly project and forecast. I know your sales manager may have a goal. You may have a personal goal, 10, 15 cars, whatever it is. You must know where those vehicles are going to come from. It's cute to say I want to sell 10 to 15 cars, but and I'm not I'm not calling anybody out in this group, but it has happened. I ask you where these cars are going to come from, and you can't tell me, which is okay. So once you master the art of projecting and forecasting, next, learn the eight ways to sell an automobile. Walk-ins, be back, prior customers, slash orphan owners, your service conversions, phone ups, internet ups, referrals, and the lost art of prospect. Find out where your cars are going to come from. If this is like building a business, owning a business within the business, X, that's a good business owner right there. All the great business owners know where their revenue is going to come from. You don't score by accident, you score on purpose. If you don't properly project, you don't properly forecast, there's no system and it's not scalable. Also, my new people, you're gonna have months where, wow, I amazed myself, I did 10 cars, I didn't know I can do that. There is something called beginner's luck, it's a real thing. And numbers tend to ebb and flow. That's why, while the numbers may not be as consistent as you like them to be, you need to be consistent. So whether you had a good month or a bad month, you stay here. You don't, you sink to the level of your training. So that's why the training is always important. So those are the top three, four things I would say a new hire really needs to focus in on. Sean, I'm sure you could add a couple of things. I'm going to add a bunch. Okay, so I'm going to start with what Malik started with, the OEM training. You were for Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, correct? That is correct. All right, bro, you have a lot of models that are there. So the first and foremost, you need to take the, the Chrysler certification very seriously. This is one of the, my biggest pet peeves is that I, we've had podcasts where we interview new hires and they said that their management, their freaking manager said, I oh, don't waste your time on that shit. Don't worry about it. Are you kidding me? We've had people that that flam the test. They'll pause it. They'll they'll try to like cheat it. They'll or they'll they'll try, but they're distracted. People are coming in. Uh, you know, available salesperson, customer, showroom. Take the damn OEM certification very, very seriously. Master your product, folks, because, you know, th these customers spend on average of like eight to nine hours plus online doing research. A lot of the times the prospects know more than the freaking salespeople. I, I learned this from Brad Lee. You know what I mean? From Lightspeed VT, the gazillionaire, right? You know, he talks about this all the time. How are you going to sell something? When you don't know it inside and out, I don't have to know. I, look, guys, like even a broken clock is right twice a day, analog. So I am telling you, I'm sure you could sell a car, you know, fumbling into that shit. That doesn't mean that you're going to sell it often and you're going to sell it profitably. See, price is only relevant with the absence of value. Brother, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you want to sell cars like candy bars, which is an expression we have, meaning sell lots of cars, then you need to be a master of your product knowledge. You need to be like Google. You know what I mean? Like you, like a Google search engine about that car. Bra, bra, bra. Because you want to you wanna master your craft inside and out. You want to have a conversation that's not strained where you're saying 50 million times, I don't know. I'm not sure. Let me find out. Now, there's nothing wrong with saying that, but if you say it all the time, like it's like it's a like it's a glitch in the matrix. I I don't I, I don't know. I I don't know. I I, I got to find out. Let, let me get back to you. Let me let me ask my manager. Like Jesus Christ, what the fuck am I talking to you for? You know what I'm saying? Like master your craft. 
understand the product inside out. You want to have a conversation like, Kelby, listen, man, I got the perfect car for you. Let me tell you right now that that 2023 Ram 1500 is so far superior against that that GMC Sierra that you were looking at. Here's why. Bra, bra, bra. You want to turn around and, and, and be the supreme product knowledge expert. Now, so master your product knowledge inside and out, but then also to take that a step further, which is hard because you got a lot, you got Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, yada, yada, yada. But then you need to also know the competing vehicles because you, my brother, are in a tier two product, okay? You're not Mr. Toyota, Mr. Honda, Mr. Ford, or Mr. Chevrolet. You're Mr. Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you, you're you not a bad product, you know what I'm saying? But you're not a tier one product, which means there are way more internet leads and way more appointments and way more sales for Toyota, Ford, Chevy, Honda than it is for Chrysler. So it's like, I'm not saying it's your ugly stripper on New Year's Eve. It's not that bad, but I'm saying, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to say that you, 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 you're you super cute either. And I mean, like, as far as being like Chrysler, I'm kidding y'all. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is you have to work this a little bit harder you know, mm -hmm. at, at mastering your craft. And I'm just trying to have some humor because you're family, you know what I mean? But I also <laughs> want you to, to know the competing vehicles because that's great if you know your product knowledge, but if you don't know how that Ram 1500 competes against the F-150, bro, the F-150 is the number one selling vehicle on planet Earth for 46 straight years, almost a half a, a century, dog, you know what I'm saying? For one product. So why is your 1500 better than the number one vehicle on planet Earth for 46 straight years? You best know, or you're going to be broke. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. need to also understand... Um, you know, all the benefits from the manufacturer do research because every manufacturer has money that's not open to the public. And most salespeople are lazy with this detail here. You got to find out what does Chrysler have for law enforcement, military, first responders? What do they have for college grads or for people in the education? What do they do for, um, you know, whatever? You know what I'm saying? Like you need to know, is there a conquest? money? Is there owner loyalty money? What are the rebates and the incentives? If there are any, you need to know all of that stuff. Now, the next thing, since we're staying with inventory is walk your lot. See a used car, my brother is like a snowflake or a fingerprint. There's only one like it. It doesn't matter if there's a Ram 1500, how many freaking Ram 1500s that are white or black that are three years old, like a 2020 that has 36,000 miles on it. A lot, bro, a lot, because it's a commodity vehicle. It's a freaking Ram 1500. So what is different about yours? You need to know things like if this was a one person owner, if it was owned by a senior citizen, is it extra clean? Is it got any aftermarket items into it? Um, you know, did they just get a new engine, a new transmission? They got new tires on there. Oh, they got the nitrous in there. They don't use regular air. They use nitrous to fill those tires. Bro, you feel me? It's got like etch. It's got like a, a theft deterrent. It's got an automatic start. You know, it, it's got, uh, you know, yo, they just did, they just traded this vehicle in and my bro, they just paid the, the serious satellite subscription for an extra year. That's like a hundred bucks or whatever. But you just see what I'm saying? You need to know the inventory inside out because most people don't walk the lot. Get to work a little bit early, man, just 10, 15 minutes early and walk the lot. I'm telling you this right now, LA talks about this, this whole, the, 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 the hundred, the rule of 100, right? If you spend 18 minutes a day training something, you will be better than 95% of the entire freaking population. Just come into work 18 minutes earlier, bro, every day and walk the lot. Know the used cars, you know what I mean? The strengths uh, of them, the miles, condition, the this and that. Because if you got to switch somebody from a new car to a pre-owned, especially, think about this, bro. If you were a Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, you know, you've got to turn around and, and switch flags really quick. You know what I mean? Oh, we got to use F-150 here. This is gorgeous. Here's why. Bra, bra, bra. So inventory is absolutely imperative. Next, you need to make sure value package proposition. Three levels. Your manufacturer, what is 
different and special about Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram? Why is Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram? Because I heard you invoke Jesus before, or God, and I, I respect you for that. But you know, I, I'm sure because you said that, if I, this is not the place to do it, but if I said, why you love Jesus? I'm sure you'd be like, because of this, because of this, because of this, because he's this, and because you you should love Jesus too, Sean. You know what I mean? And you have, and here's why, because of this, because of that, because of that. You have a million reasons. You better love Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. I'm not saying as much as Jesus, but I mean like close. You got to fall in love with Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram and know why you're yeah. flagging. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. if you don't love your brand, how are you going to convince somebody else to love that product enough to buy it? It is the second largest item your prospects will ever buy in their lifetime. And some of your people, this might literally be the most expensive thing they buy for the entire eternity they're on this earth before they pass away. So think about that. And you know what? If you don't love the product, then how can you expect somebody else to fall in love with this? So fall in love with your product. Understand what is different and better about Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Second is Preston Automotive Group is an amazing automotive group. What makes them different? Why are they special? What's different and better? What do they do for the community? What is their mission, vision, values? And then you've got to look into your heart and Malik can work this with you. And you've got to say, what are you willing to do to earn somebody's respect? What are you willing to do to earn somebody's business? Because they could choose to buy a car anywhere. They could even choose to buy from Preston. Why should they choose you as their salesperson? You know what I mean? Everybody thinks, oh, man, they're lucky to deal with me. You know, that's ego. We are honored to deal with them. These people just put more money in your pocket than you've ever had legally, at least, right? You know what I'm saying? In one month, you know what I'm saying? So again, you are Malik's brother. Shout out, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you caught that. So, yeah, yeah. Again, <laughs> Malik, that was a joke, man. You know it's coming from me. So <laughs> you see what I'm saying though, Kelby, is that yeah. you need to understand what your value package proposition is from the OEM, from the dealership, dealer group, and from yourself. Now there's more. You need to master the road to the sale. The road to the sale is how to sell a car from when you up a customer on the lot or the showroom. But then you need to also master how do you take an internet up? How do you take an internet up? How do you follow up with the internet up? How do you take a phone up? How do you follow up with the phone up? How do you turn around and, you know, do the projecting and forecasting? Because you need to create that GPS for financial success. And then after that, you've got to figure out, okay, there's eight ways to sell cars. Walk-ins, how do you master spotting and selling cars? B-backs, how do you master the art of, of, of selling cars to people that have come in and didn't buy the first time around? And most people forget about them and they just, it's like having like a refrigerator with half, you know, uh, drank juices in there. You feel what I'm saying? Like 13 different mm -hmm. bottles that are quarter, half quarter, three quarters filled. And then instead of finishing them, you just open another bottle of juice. What you need to do is, is, is finish every opportunity. You know, again, next is, is working on the internet ups, the phone ups, like I talked about, service conversions. You know, then you have prior customers, orphan owners, data money, equity money, all that stuff. Then you have referral generation and then the lost art of prospecting, which brings me into, you got to, and, and here's the, another powerful thing right here. And I'm giving you a lot because you're Malik's brother. I'm trying to give you some, some heat right here. Most people in the automotive industry are reactive. It's like they, they go for the magic up us, the internet ups, the phone ups, you know, the showroom ups, the, the, the manager ups, meaning that if the manager throws them a bone, we call it cheese, like some government cheese, right? Like a block of Obama cheese, right? In the hood. Okay, that's a, here you go, Kelby. And they're like, oh, thank you. No, you know what I mean? You want to be independent. When you first get to the dealership, Eat from everywhere you can off the floor. You know what I mean? From walk-ins, you know, B-backs, internet, phone, work, the service drive, all that stuff. But what you need to do, what's going to really differentiate yourself is start to develop your own book of business. You know what I mean? That's with really mastering referral generations. You need to get good at, at activating informants in the community. You know, informants for people that want to buy or sell cars or need financing for cars. You want to put the word out on the street and everywhere you, you come across, you know, I sell cars. You want to turn around and, 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 and advertise, ask me what I do, follow me at Kelby, whatever your social handle is. You want to be a walking, talking billboard and everybody you come in contact with needs to know that you sell cars, 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 cars. You're the car guy. 
know what I'm saying? Like every block's got, you know, when I grew up, we had the, the DVD person, we had the mixtape person, we had this person, we had the burner person, we had a different type of person for different things. You feel me? You're yeah. the car guy now. You know what I'm saying? You're the plug for the cars. And that's what you want to be able to get that message out there. And you want to be able to incentivize people to, to generate you massive amount of referrals. In addition to really generating referrals, 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 you want to be all over social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. You want to be doing videos. You want to be on YouTube. I just saw, and I don't even see Malik, Malik if you saw this, that kid Ryan that I always talk about. At 11 years old, he made $35 million last year in one year. He's now over $115 or $120 million in four years he's made. Four or five years, the kid's made over $120 million. Last year, at 11 years old, he made $35 million reviewing toys on YouTube. He's got 28 employees, three different YouTube channels. The kid is a beast. My point being is that you should become an influencer in your local community. You know what I'm saying? Like you need to turn around and be the local influencer, influencer for everything automotive. You're the plug. You feel me? I feel Malik, you. I took some air. Go ahead. You want to tag in on that? What can I really add on? Yeah, I guess I'll ask you. I mean, what feedback do you have on what Sean just on all the heat that Sean just gave you? I mean, I, I wrote mostly everything down. I mean. It, it it it's I'm not, I'm not gonna say it's like gospel, but it's it's a it's like a book of book of wisdom came from a book of wisdom, a book of knowledge, and honestly, I like I said I said this before. I don't know if you remember this, Sean. I was like I I looked at a video where you had bought a I believe it was a Maserati, and I said you know what you're the standard now. You you just gave me a you just gave me a mark. You just gave me a goal, and one thing I like. Now that I have a goal, I'm shooting for it. But I'm not just shooting for it. I want to shoot past it. I want to be it. Even though as astronomical as I think it may be right now, it's not that hard to obtain if I just focus on being beyond that. And one of my champions or what I say, one of the people that I looked up to very much was Kobe Bryant. It's that Mamba mentality. It's that I'm going to be better than you. I'm going to outwork you and there's nothing you can do about it. So just taking what you have said about, you know, the OEM training, mastering, uh, mastering your product. I mean, learn how to prospect, compete, uh, know the competing vehicles. Uh, let's just say walking the lot, understanding what's on the lot, the value package, doing your own personal referral business. You, you're, you have to know how to be the car guy in your community so that everybody knows that you are the point person to go to not only not only physically and literally in front of me but also virtually so social media being on tiktok being on facebook being on instagram you know just being that point person to be like you know what matter of fact this happened to me not too long ago i was i was at wawa somebody was just like hey aren't you that guy from like i saw you on like tiktok or something like that right you sell cars right yeah i am so they popped right on in so it's stuff like that. So everything that I have been doing currently for like a month and a half, it's almost like now that you're saying it, it's almost like, okay, I've already applied it. Now I just need to keep repeating, keep repeating, keep repeating. And it, it, there is that attrition that comes with it, but also the repetitiveness, knowing it. I, I love how my older brother said this, don't just score accidentally, score on purpose. You know, know where you know where your uh, people are coming from. Know where they're going to uh, come in. You're scheduling appointments. You're doing your OEM. You're prospecting. You would be amazed of how much if you just apply the knowledge that you two have both given, and then actually put it into practice, and then you'll start to see the results that that will come out of that. So honestly, the feedback is: listen here, people. I'm new to the business. I'm not speaking like I've been here for like five years, but I understand it. And they sp and they spat it in a way that even I can grasp it. I can apply it. And now tomorrow, I want to sell even more cars. Even today, I got I got one that that might be uh in the business to sell a car today. And that's at the at, at the drop of a bell. So thank you, uh, Sean. That also thanks my brother to uh, everything that y'all have uh, shared with me.
Oh, you're, you're welcome, my friend. I had a couple questions for you before we let you go. Quick questions, though. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we're, we're coming to time. Is what what do you find is working for you? you? Again, you you just the first month you sold nine cars first month. And again, it's just the very, very beginning. But when you're engaging with customers, um, what do you find works the best in, in, you know, in engaging with the prospect, getting them to like, trust you, believe you and sell them a car? Give me, give us some of your, your newbie, uh, feedback. So one of the things that has worked for me, um, I've always been a people person. I've sat and spoke with CEOs at a round table with dim lighting, but <laughs> I've also worked with John at McDonald's flipping burgers also at the same time. So it's just establishing a personal relationship. Listen, people come to a car lot. Yes, they they might be a little bit apprehensive to, you know, trust you right away. So let me build that trust. So just asking them, you know, how, how are you doing? What's your name? How's your day? Or where do you work? Just establishing some type of relationship has actually helped me to a point to where now I'm not I'm not selling the car. The car has actually sold itself. But I'm selling me. I'm selling them to trust me. So now when they come into the showroom and now they sit at my desk, it's more about like, you know what, Kelby? Yeah, I like that car. But uh, what are you doing? Are you going to be in tomorrow? Like, can we can we like can we get your number? Because we I might have a daughter that might be interested in it. Oh, OK. So what's your daughter's name? Oh, what does she do? Now, because of just a brief conversation that happened outside, now I'm at my desk. We're not even focusing on the car anymore. It's more about, you know what? This is Kelby. I'm not Mr. Sir or Sir, how you doing? They know my name. They know me. One person actually gave me a nickname. So we it's it's all about being comfortable with somebody and just knowing who, who your personnel is. Know your demographic. Know the people that you live around. I don't live in Miami. I wish I did, but I don't live in Miami. Nobody's coming in with $50,000 checks. I'm sorry. If they do, great. I'll take them. But that's not my demographic. Get to know your people. I work right behind a hospital. I know a lot of nurses. I know a lot of doctors. But the fact is, they don't really come in. No, I got to know the personnel. Got to know the people in my community. And that's what's helped me. Real quick, just because you just triggered a thought right there, Malik, sidebar, benchmark, an idea. Um, after he gets a little more established at the dealership, we could possibly talk to him about creating some type of value package proposition specifically for like the medical, for the hospitals, uh, for the nurses, et cetera, especially since, you know, the manufacturers do stuff for first responders, medical staff, things like that. I think that we could kind of help you when you're ready after you get all the basics down and you're in rhythm, then we could talk about macro selling and selling to these hospitals and things like that. Okay, brother? That sounds great to me. Malik, what would you like to add as you start to close this out for the show? I just want to add how proud I am, my little, my little brother, uh, affectionately. You got, like, our story is really, really dope, Sean. It's like if you took one child and dropped them off in this community and dropped the other child off in a completely different community, how would they end up? They end up in the automotive industry, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I mean? So I'm just, his growth, his path, uh, we, we, we've been thick as thieves, uh, thick as thieves our whole lives. So it's not a surprise that we would end up in the same industry, but I'm just proud of him because he's overcome so much. Things that we don't have to discuss today, he knows what I'm talking about. I'm just proud, just proud. We got we come from a big family, a family that expects us to be great. This is why when Young Jedi's on this camera, I'm always, I'm always 100% because we come from teachers. We come from important people. We have a huge family, and it's, it's good to know that they're proud of both of us for what we're doing here. So just, if, if you don't know that, bro, I love you, and I'm proud of you, man. And everybody else, if y'all happen to see Kelby Peace Bullock, I expect y'all to treat him with the same love and respect that you show the Jedi, man, or I'm coming for you. <laughs> and listen, and if there's anything, Kelby, that I could ever do, you know, again, just let me know or let Malik know you want to book time with us at Dealer Synergy. I'm sure that he's got you on Bradley on demand. And again, you got one of the best trainers in the industry is your brother. So again, I'm sure that he he works hard for all of our clients and stuff like that. But you can't help 
but doing more and deeper for people that you love that's family. So I'm sure that you're in the best hands possible in, in getting acclimated to the industry. And, and Malika tell you, we've got some ridiculous resources and connections and clout. If there's anything that, that me, my team could ever do to help, you know, we are text message or phone call away. Listen, I, I love it, man. I, I honestly love it. And of course I love you too, bro. You know, that's why we say uh, we 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 are thick as thieves, you know, like he said, one got dropped off in one community and the other one got dropped off in the other. And it seems like we were night and day at one point. It's just like he acted one way. I acted a different way. But then it's almost like that brotherly love. It 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 overcomes a whole bunch of stuff. And honestly, the fact that now the resources that he has is now available to me not just you, uh, I, I've spoken with Tiana. I, 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 I've had a conversation with her and getting to know the TikTok world, you know, cause that, that was a space that I wasn't really privy to, but now opening up to her and that she is seeing, she's helping me and giving me advice and stuff like that. And that's all thanks to what my brother has been able to do. So if there's anything that I need, I know I can count on my older brother, you, uh, Sean, or anybody else of the Dear the Synergy team. So I appreciate everything. And don't worry, this will not be the last time you will see my face. I promise you, you will see my face again. And I guarantee you, the next time you see me, it won't be as a newbie. And it won't be as a, <clears throat> I'll just use my brother's term, it won't be as a Padawan. Let's put it that way. So there you have it, the Millionaire Car Salesman Podcast. This podcast comes to you every week from the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. If you have a question about the show or would like the chance to become a guest, feel free to contact us directly at 856-546-2440 or email us at millionairecarsalesman at gmail.com. This program is a presentation of Synergy Records, Produced by Tiana Mick and L.A. Williams. Production and engineering by L.A. Williams. The Millionaire Car Salesman podcast is hosted every week by L.A. Williams and the millionaire car salesman himself, Sean V. Bradley. The Millionaire Car Salesman podcast can be found everywhere, so please don't forget to review, subscribe to, and share the show. Thanks for listening to the Millionaire Car Salesman podcast, and remember, where I'm from, money provides options. If you enjoyed this podcast, then make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave us a review. You know, let some other folks know about it. Oh, and don't forget to join the Millionaire Car Salesman group on Facebook. We'll see you there.